Well, let's take you to the National Assembly now, where the House of Representatives on Thursday cautioned President Bola Tunubu against rushing to implement the 2012 Steve Oronsaye report. Tunubu had on Monday directed the implementation of the report aimed at rationalizing and restructuring federal government status, commissions, departments, and agencies. The House urged the President to comprehensively review the report, as well as other related reports and white papers before full implementation. The House resolution followed the adoption of a motion of urgent national importance sponsored by Honorables Kama Nkem Kama Olumide Oshoba and Jonathan Gaza Gwefui. The presidential candidate of the Labour Party in the 2023 general elections, Mr. Peter Obi, has criticized the recent decision of the Monetary Policy Committee to increase the monetary policy rate to 22.5% and the cash reserve ratio to 45%, saying it will further worsen the economic situation of most Nigerians. Obi, in a series of posts on his ex handle on Thursday, said a hike in NPR, also known as interest rate, will be counterproductive as it would not address the intended purpose of managing money supply. He cautioned that what the Nigerian economy needs now is hard-headed, practical originality and results that tinkering with classical economic theories can only deepen the crisis. And the federal government says it has queued up in the global outsourcing market, which has grossed almost $350 billion with a view to tapping into its huge job opportunities for the nation's teeming youth. Accordingly, Vice President Kashim Shatima will on Monday in Gombe State launch the Outsource to Nigeria Initiative, a private sector-led government-enabled program anchored by the office of the Vice President. The move was designed to create jobs in the business process and technology-enabled outsourcing sector. The Deputy Chief of Staff to the President, Office of the Vice President, Senator Ibrahim Hadeja, who disclosed this at a press conference in Abuja yesterday, also noted that Otney, uh, when successfully rolled out across the country, will be the fastest way to achieving job security for Nigeria's teaming youth. And now let's take you to Kaduna State, where many residents of uh, Goni Gora Kakao Ward, Chukun local government area, uh, blocked the Kaduna Abuja Highway following the killing of two local vigilantes and abduction of several residents by bandits in the area on Thursday morning. According to reports, the protesters pelted security agencies with tear gas at them. The bandits were said to have invaded 10 houses at Goningora and kidnapped an unspecified number of residents late Wednesday night. The assailants were also said to have burned soldiers' vehicles at Ligari village during a shootout as the bandits attempted to flee the community with the captives. The state's overseeing commissioner, Ministry of Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Arunwa, led security chiefs in the state to the scene of the protest. He cautioned residents against taking laws into their hands, saying there was no justification for them to block the highway. The commissioner said the security agencies were doing their best to tackle the insecurity in the state. Recently, stakeholders in Nigeria's agricultural sector convened to discuss the Agricultural Extension Service Delivery Revitalization Bill. The meeting emphasized the importance of collaboration and funding to address the challenges faced by farmers in the country, the involvement of commissioners and input from the Technical Committee on Agriculture and the three tiers of government were deemed essential. During the meeting, Commissioner Meigari Dankingari from Kebi State highlighted the current food shortage in Nigeria he praised the success of the previous agricultural development programs and stressed the importance of improving funding. He also advocated for the inclusion of private extension services to contribute to the agricultural sector and boost food sufficiency. Professor Simon Yalams, the Commissioner of Agriculture from Bauchi State, called for capacity building and inclusiveness to promote the agricultural sector. He emphasized the role of extension services in bridging the gap between research and farmers. In agreement, Commissioner Johnson Iboko from Cross River State pointed out that about 70% of farmers in Nigeria cannot meet 50%
of the country's food demand. He attributed this to the problem of agriculture extension services. He further highlighted the legislative backing of extension services in the United Kingdom and the need for a clear legal framework in Nigeria to address the challenges. And now let's take you to the southeast in Abia State. The government has debunked a report trending on social media that Governor Alex Oti had sued the Nigerian government and President Bola Tinubu at the International Criminal Court, ICC. The chief press secretary to the governor, Kazie Uko, in a press release on Friday described the reports as the handiwork of rabble rousers. According to Uko, the fake news claimed Oti sued the Federal Republic of Nigeria and President Tinubu for allegedly refusing to grant the request of the Abia governor to establish a seaport and an international airport in Abia. The Abia state government therefore advised the general public to ignore the fake reports. The Inspector General of Police, Olu Kayodi Egbetokun, says the police would continue to work harmoniously with relevant security agencies and stakeholders, including host communities, to confront Egbetokun said this in Abuja at the inauguration of training on safe schools for state coordinators and divisional police officers, DPOs. He said the police would continue to give priority to the safety and security of schools nationwide. The events also featured the inauguration of platforms, vehicles and equipment for the safe school program. According to the IGP, the training was designed to equip state coordinators and DPOs nationwide with comprehensive knowledge and strategies and national plans for the Safe Schools Initiative. He said it is aimed at crafting a definitive strategy for collaboration between the police and other vital stakeholders to ensure a more protected learning environment for school children, adding that the inauguration of the equipment was to optimize human and material resources of the police in combating crimes, particularly those targeting educational institutions.